All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. It was a pretty chaotic week in the stock market. Hope you had a good weekend also got some rest we are now getting back into the action which hopefully won't be too chaotic but we do have a lot going on this week in terms of data and earnings so it looks like here on monday we have nothing scheduled for april 22nd and then tuesday we are going straight into s p flash us services pmi and also manufacturing pmi also new home sales at 10. so these pmis can definitely move us at 9 45 it's going to be 15 minutes after the opening bell so definitely keep a watch on that and then on wednesday we do have durable goods orders this is always a hit or miss if it moves the market usually it really doesn't but i suppose really any econ data can move us it just depends on how extreme the reading is thursday will be a big one because we have gdp it's going to be at 8 30 as well also advanced retail inventories advanced wholesale inventories and pending home sales so the gdp is going to be the big one on thursday and then pending home sales at 10. And then on Friday, it's going to be a big one. We do have personal income, personal spending, and the biggest one of them all is going to be the PCE. Also at 10 o'clock, a little bit after that, it's going to be consumer sentiment. This always has a pretty big knee-jerk reaction, either up or down. It really just depends on the reading. So we got PCE at 8.30 in the pre-market, and then at 10 a.m. mid-session, that consumer sentiment. It's definitely going to be a volatile Friday, I believe. So the most important is going to be the PCE, obviously. Now I'd say consumer sentiment. Also, GDP is probably going to be the second most important. On Thursday, you got pending home sales. And even on Tuesday, the services and manufacturing PMI, these could even be the second most important. It really just depends. I would say they're all pretty equally important, except for PCE. PCE is going to be the big one of the week. That pretty much powers over all of them because that's our main inflation gauge right now, especially for the Fed. We got CPI and PCE. Fed prefers PCE. And that's what they use to gauge inflation. And they use that for monetary policy. So PCE is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. But that's for the data this week. I don't want to spend too much time going over the calendar because we do have some earnings to look at real quick on the calendar. You can see we got Verizon on Monday. We got Cleveland Cliffs, CLF. That's a pretty nice name to trade. Tuesday, getting into the more important names. We got Visa. We got Tesla, UPS, General Motors, General Electric, Spotify, and Pepsi. Also, end phase energy. So this is a pretty stocked day here on Tuesday. Wednesday, going to be even bigger, I would say, because we got Meta. Also have IBM, Ford, AT&T, Humana, Chipotle, Boeing, and ServiceNow. Those are the ones that stick out to me the most. And then Thursday is probably going to be the huge one of the week because it's Microsoft and Alphabet all in the same day. So these are... Definitely some of the mega cap names. They hold a lot of weight in the S&P and the NASDAQ. So this will be a pretty big day, I'm guessing. Also, we have Intel, Roku, and Snap. Even RCL and American Airlines for the travel industry. So that should be pretty interesting as well. And then Friday, a couple of the big boy energy names. We got Exxon and Chevron. This will definitely likely move the XLE. We trade that ETF. I love trading it. So this is a pretty big week for earnings. And then I mean, it just gets bigger throughout the month, as you can tell, because we got AMD on the 30th and also Amazon and PayPal. We got Apple going into May. So lots of big names coming up and it's definitely going to be a big one. And before we get into the setups, let's go ahead and look at the seasonality real quick, which we did not follow at all last week. We were actually supposed to have a pretty nice stretch here to the upside in terms of historical moves. We moved upward 75% of the time the last 20 years last week. We did not follow that at all. Market did get a little correction. So we did the complete opposite. So that just goes to show you, even though we have gone up 75% of the time in the last 20 years, that doesn't mean it has to follow. You can always fall in that lower probability because seasonality is really not going to account for random geopolitical situations, tensions in the Middle East, Fed's commenting on monetary policy, all that stuff. I mean, it's just not going to account in the seasonality. So but that's really the market. I mean, that's really the market with anything, even technical analysis. You're not going to get a 100% win rate. Same thing with seasonality. You're not going to get market doing the same thing each year. 100% of the time it just doesn't happen. But we do look at this to kind of get a general idea of the trend month over month, especially on a week by week basis. You can kind of get an idea of what you're heading into historically. And we've followed the seasonality pretty well. I mean, we really haven't had like too big of a deviation from it. Minus this February pullback that was supposed to happen historically. We did not really get that. But overall for the upside, we followed it pretty good. Last week, we did not follow the upside at all. We actually followed to the downside. So we'll see how that goes. This week, we have winning trades at 60%. We got summarized profit at 8%. And we got a pretty nice little up thrust here from the 22nd to the 26th. And that's the last 20 years. 
If we go down to the 10 year, which is more recent years, we get a little bit more neutral here. So you can see we really don't have anything too big here the last 10 years. We got winning trades at 50% and that's 50% winners to the upside because this is back testing long trades. We got summarized profit at 0%. So you really don't have anything special here the last 10 years for this specific week. But like we looked at on the 20 year data set, there's a little bit more data and it's showing that we have a potential for an upthrust. Maybe we can get a dead cat bounce in the market. Market definitely sold off very quickly. I uh, got a little bit oversold. Maybe we'll see some pre-earnings run-ups while you know some of the bigger tech stocks are cheap. Maybe we can see a nice little bounce next week. I would like to see that, but we'll go over the technicals later on the charts. So that's for the seasonality. Relatively bullish. I would say neutral even if you want to count the 10-year data set. Looking pretty decent. I don't really see anything too huge here for downside or really even for upside. So maybe we can get a dead cap bounce. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, and on to the setups for the week. Hopefully we'll have a good list this week. I would say last week's was actually pretty good. We had DKNG puts that broke down pretty well. I didn't get to jump in those, but I did jump in our Lulu calls and I did alert that in the chat and we actually made 200 a contract on those. We were also looking at shop calls last week, but that didn't really do anything. It didn't really hold over the 70s that good. So that could be, you know, still a potential setup in the future, but shop last week, it didn't have the good follow through like Lulu and DKNG. So not always going to get all three setups to play out, but either way, good list last week at a pretty good week last week as well. Not too shabby, even though the market was you know pretty ugly. But for this week, our first one here, we're looking at Pfizer. So this is ticker symbol PFE. This has just been getting slammed for a long time now. I mean, it's been in a constant downtrend, but what I'm noticing here is a potential for a little dead cap bounce. You can see that this 26 level is actually pretty strong. It had a pretty nice reaction right here. You had a pretty nice bounce right here. And now it just sweeped under the lows and then reclaimed back over. So what this could turn into is known as a wick off accumulation schematic. And what this specific setup could be is a spring. So this is a spring in a wick off accumulation schematic. It's pretty interesting. You can see it takes out the lows. It shoots back up, kind of holds the support and heads back to resistance. So that's just one thing I kind of noticed about it because I used to kind of pay attention to wick off accumulation and distribution schematics, kind of see how market structure works and, you know, look for potential reversals at the tops and reversals at the bottom, etc. So PFV kind of reminded me of that schematic. We're kind of at the spring stage. It took out the lows, now shooting back up and that shoot up and reclaim over the lows is kind of what's telling that it could get some upside here. Obviously, you can't really shoot past this little downtrend line. It's probably about as low as you could project. If we add the moving averages, you probably have a lot more resistance as well. You do have earnings coming up here as well. So this would be a longer day to play. It'd be something you'd have to hold through the report. Uh, unless you're looking to sell by, you know, Tuesday, April 30th, or even on the day of. So I'm looking at maybe June calls minimum. It's going to be about two months. You can probably even go further out if you want something at the money, maybe slight out of the money at a 30 delta. But I'm definitely keeping a watch on this for a more kind of longer term play. If indeed this is the bottom or some type of spring play from a wick off accumulation schematic, this could turn into something nice on the long term. So obviously on um, wick off, you want to be paying attention to larger time frames because these things take time. Accumulation takes a lot of time to play out. And honestly, PFE has been selling off for a long time. It's definitely in some type of accumulation pattern here. I mean, it's very cheap. The price to earnings is not too bad. And it's just been getting slammed basically since people realized COVID was probably a scam. But that's for PFE. Like I said, they have earnings probably in about 10 days. You'd want to buy a lot of time on calls, maybe even do like a longer term debit spread if you want. I feel like the calls would be cheap enough though. I mean, it's only $26 a share. The calls really shouldn't be too expensive. You probably won't need to do a debit spread, but maybe even sell some put credit spreads or something further out. But either way, I like this for upside. You just want to be a little bit careful. We are trending under all the moving averages. You got earnings coming up and max upside you can probably see is just that downtrend line. It's probably really all you could go for. But that's for PFE. Be patient. Let's see if this turns into a wick off spring. That could be a pretty interesting ride to the upside. And next we're going into IWM. So usually we don't go over the indexes until we go over all the individual setups. But this week, I really could only find PFE as an individual ticker. And then I really like a spy setup right now for upside. So we'll go over that next. This setup is pretty simple. It really hasn't touched this one day 200 EMA for a pretty long time, probably since all the way back in late 23. After I got this breakout over the 200 EMA, got some really nice momentum back here. We are now touching that for the first time. And I 
pretty long time. I mean, months. So I'm looking at longs on this. Pretty simple. Probably just 521 expiration minimum. I would like to see some type of reversal off this one day 200 EMA. Obviously, it could get a little bit sketchy if it does start closing under the one day 200 EMA. But lots of times you can see fake outs under the moving averages and they'll shoot back up. So if you really wanted to use this little structure low here, this demand zone low at about 187, if it starts breaking under 187, you probably not want to look at calls anymore because that could get pretty nasty. But let's see if we can see a little bounce off this one day 200 EMA. It's a pretty simple setup. We also have this little, what is that? Rally base rally, maybe even drop base rally right here. This little zone still kind of holding. Obviously it did get a little bit of a close under it, but we closed back inside of it. So definitely watching this demand zone still. I would like to get a little bit more inside of it to kind of reclaim the lows and show that it's holding pretty strong. You'd probably have to start looking for resistance at the one day 921 EMA combo or this one day 921 cloud here, this little red area that can act as res. So you got to be careful. Maybe even the one day 50 EMA that can also act as res. You can see the 50 EMA is good support here, good support here, good support here, support area here. Once we flushed under the 50, went straight down to the 200. So just kind of use the moving averages as price targets if you're trending below them. That's just one way to go about it if you are buying and going long when we are trending under the EMAs. So that's for IWM. We're looking at calls, minimum expiration, 521, probably something at the money, a little bit less risky, higher delta, et cetera. So that's for IWM. Risk off under you know, 187. You might even need to go tighter on 521 expiration. Not exactly sure. We'll have to see how the premiums are moving, but I would say this 187 is probably your, pretty much your risk off area. Cause if it breaks under that, there's a lot of room to fall. As you can see right here, I mean, there's even some old gaps down here. So you gotta be careful with that. So 187 area, it's gonna be a complete risk off. You can probably even go tighter. You know, if it starts closing under the one day 200 EMA, if you're skeptical, but I would really watch this 187 cause this area can hold up as a low and bounce from there. So I would just use the 187.50s as a risk off. If you have to go further out, go with June. Cause if you do May and it goes all the way down to 187, the drawdown might be pretty decent. So maybe even June would be better. So that's for IWM, be patient. Let's see if we can get a one day 200 EMA bounce. All right, and on to the SPY. So last week we had our levels at 524.11. Obviously that's the 52 week high. We had the 518.22. We really needed SPY to get above the 518.22 to retest that 52-week high. It was not able to do that. As you can see, Monday here is a very big move down. We also have 508.12, 504.91, and then 503.02 plus that gap. I got rid of the gap though because we filled it already, but this is what we had drawn out pretty much. I think there was also a demand zone here, but it ended up closing below that and flushing that basically from 510s to 508s. I think it was right here. So that was a demand zone we were looking at as well. It flushed through that the first day. So it was very hard to buy off that. And basically I mentioned it really wouldn't be too bearish until it got, you know, inside the gap and we did fill that. So we basically spent the whole week filling that to the downside, but now we are starting to get to a more important demand zone. This is actually the same zone pre Nvidia earnings from when we gapped up. So this little gap up right here, this was Nvidia earnings when they had a pretty good quarter, it brought up everything. So we closed the gap, obviously max upside. I could see for right now, if we do bounce off this little drop base rally demand, you could probably really only shoot up to 503 for right now, which is the basically the previous gap support. So we're keeping the same levels on obviously, but we are marking this new demand zone, obviously risk off. And I would not be looking at calls anymore, probably. It starts breaking under this right here. You can even mark the exact low if you want. It's going to be 490s, about 490.72. So this is a very important demand zone. It needs to hold up this area to get to 503s. And overall, it would need to reclaim, you know, 500 and 503 to really get an actual reversal. Right now, I would consider any bounces on this a dead cat bounce for now until you see a little bit more of a real reversal signal reclaiming structures as such that we have marked. We could even look at the 15 minute. Let's see how it was reacting to all these levels throughout the week. Monday was just such a big day. Like it was really kind of hard to do anything. We kept up over here about 515. Once we lost that 51276 again, it really started to get a little bit more bearish. We closed the gap, came back up, tested that 51276 again, flushed very aggressively. 
down into the 504.91s to 503s, which is basically a gap support. You can see we stopped out here. I guess it kind of made some decent scalps on this if you went long at the 503s to you know 504 area. It held up the gap support very good. Once we lost the gap support, you could tell that the momentum really picked up. Had a little dead cap bounce here, but overall rejected the 503s and we continued down into our new demand. So overall, I'd say the levels worked pretty good in terms of visual here. I mean, it held up the gap support. It got aggressive below that. It came back up, tested the general area, rejected, uh, rejected again right here at the 503. So, I mean, overall, I would say it worked. It was just very chaotic just from Monday. And yeah, VIX went crazy too. So it was very, very volatile. I think there was a lot of switch in the market, lots of change in behavior. And we really see that reflect in the price action. So that 512.76 was very important because that was this little sell-off candle low. And you can see why we reacted to that on the 15 minute, this little sell off low or structure low. Show you again real quick on the 15 minute. Here's that rejection off the 512.76. Once we went back below that, it got very, very aggressive. So this 512.76 or that pretty much that sell off structure low right here. This was a pretty important level, even a bounce zone right here. So you can see why it rejected so aggressively right here. It was not able to reclaim back over that. And even when we did reclaim it, we gapped up and then sold back off. So the 512.76 and the 518s is very crucial for bulls to get back above and it failed to do so last week. Now for this week, if you really do want to see a nice snapback in the market, you definitely want to see the reclaim over 503s, like I said, but that's kind of going to be my short-term price target for now. I don't really want to project any higher than that. If we do get a dead cap bounce here, that's probably about as high as I could go for right now. But if we do start closing back over the 503s, I can pretty much project higher. But I'm looking at spy calls on this 517 expiration or the, the main monthlies, whatever that date is. Looking at it at this demand zone could be a pretty good play. I would say that the 503s to 504 structure low uh, is probably going to meet pretty good with the moving averages as well. So you can't really project any higher than the one day 9 and 21 EMA combo because it could get up there, act as a lower high, and then reject lower. As you see right here on this Monday candle, basically gapped up into the 921 combo and just rejected off of it. And then here's your one day 50 EMA as well. It's your more medium term. Your 200 is not to way down here, but I don't think we're just going to flush down to the 200 just yet. I feel like this little structure low could hold up. Obviously, if it does break under this 490, this one day 200 EMA won't be totally foreign and it wouldn't really be surprising to get down there. But right now, definitely watch this structure low. I feel like we haven't gotten too bearish yet like the one week bar is pretty crazy definitely it was a very red week not much bouncing but we are at some good prices now and we do have earnings coming up so we'll see how that goes but that's for spy looking at calls be patient 517 expiration minimum uh, i would probably look at scalps off this area as well for day trades but in terms of swing trades and hitting that 503s target i would go with 517 or the may monthlies all right not to qqq so this was actually a little bit more clear in terms of where it was going i would say looking back at it here so we had a pretty gnarly gap it really needed to get under the 433s to 432.70s level and flush that gap in order to be super bearish we did that first thing monday we had a very clear close inside the gap on Monday. You can see it came back up, tested the structure low on this bar specifically right there. You can see that little green bar turned into a heavy wick. Did the same thing, tested again, top range right here at the 433s, filled the whole gap in this one candle right here on Wednesday. And then just more follow through to the downside. So really couldn't buy the dip anywhere here. I'm actually in some May QQQ calls from, I believe I bought right here around the close on Thursday. So this Friday move definitely gave me a little bit of drawdown. I only grabbed one, but we'll see how that goes. I'm feeling a little bit like we could bounce back up. Obviously, I really want to see a reclaim over the 416, or this little demand zone low. We did close below this demand zone here though, so I'll probably get rid of this zone for right now and just keep that structure low. If we can get over that 416.79, that's a nice bounce. You see the one week 21 EMA meets at about 421s. We can even look at that real quick on here. So here's your one week 921 combo. It's your 921. We did close under that, so that's not good. We really need to get back over that. Very big bearish bar. One week MACD is now negative. So we could see a little bit of a shift, but as you can see, I mean, even back here, it kind of did get some random bounces here, even with a negative MACD. So the momentum indicators aren't always so important, but price action is usually a little bit more important. So yeah, that's pretty much your level to watch right now. Just that 416.79, it really needs to 
reclaim back over that for upside. Also needs to get over that 421s at the one week 21 EMA. Probably get rid of this gap now that it's closed. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It needed to flush the structure low of the gap in order to fill it. Lots of fake outs here, lots of bounces back in a couple weeks ago. It was finally able to disrupt that structure low and just totally break down. You probably want to mark this 412.92, which is this little peak right here as well. So mark that. That could hold up as a back test area, pretty old back test area. There's also a little zone here at 395s. Also a little bounce zone right here at 402.92. So pretty much your levels of focus, 412.92, which is this back test. Lower levels at 402.92. 395s as well. You really want to reclaim your 41679 before getting too bullish. So you want to see that reclaim over that. Also need to reclaim over the 421s. So your 41679 and your 42120s is very important to get back over. So your 416s is the structure low right here. The 421s, the one week 21 EMA that I showed you in the last clip. So yeah, your 41292 is the absolute. It needs to hold that so we don't flush down to 402s. And we need that reclaim over 41679. So basically bearish under, you know, 41292, bullish over 41679, and bullish over 42126. All right, and last but not least, we're going over the VIX. So actually Friday's close last week, looks like it had potential to reject since we hit that 1794, which is this peak right here. You can see this was the close last Friday. That was our chance to flush back down to the 15s. It was not able to do that. You can see actually Monday, first thing, it closed over the 1794. And this is when things really started to break a little bit. And then you can see we failed to get back under that 1794. It actually held as a back test, closed over this day, this day, and this day. So if it closed over the 1794s, literally four days in a row, once on Monday, once on Tuesday, once on Wednesday, and once on Thursday, also Friday as well. But really our signal to go long really needed to be on a close under the 18s for VIX, it was just not able to do that. So it was very hard to get a signal for the market to go long without that close under the 18s. And that's pretty much what I was looking for all week and I did not get that. And the VIX is correlated with SPY mostly. So in order to kind of go long on the SPY or feel comfortable going long SPY, I feel like this demand zone we just went over will be good regardless, but I will want to see a move back under the 18s for the VIX. It's pretty simple. Same thing as last week. So you want to see that move under the 18s. It's pretty clear why. This is a big peak zone. You can see it rejected on this big bar right here as well last Thursday. And overall, it's just a big level. We need to get back under the 1794 or just, you know, round it up to 18. But yeah, you can see, I mean, it's holding up the 18s very well. This is why we really couldn't see volatility sell off and likely why we couldn't get a bounce in the market. You can see it got even bigger all the way up to the 21 it gapped up here at about four in the morning after the israel retaliatory strike to iran this is when the vix went up all the way to the 20s at about four in the morning and then sold off basically the whole day to show you real quick so this was a pretty big overnight move but the futures bounced very aggressively we basically opened flat by open and then we went down just the rest of the day basically on spy and qqq so even though the vix sold off aggressively it really didn't matter because it held up you know about 4% almost. And the market just kept grinding lower, likely due to semiconductors, lots of chip names going lower. The SMH looked really weak. NVIDIA down 10%. So very chaotic Friday. Also, we had options expiration. So it was just nuts. But yeah, the key levels really haven't changed on VIX. It needs to get under that 18 zone. That 18 level is huge. We need to close under that, like a very obvious close to show that volatility is going to sell back off. So as you can see, this 1794 to 23 peak is a very big free space zone. And that's why we've kind of been moving through it so freely because there's literally nothing here. So this is all free space to move up and down around. And then you have a peak at 23s. So that's about it. Just the 1794s and that 23 peak. You can maybe even mark this little peak right here as well at 22s. And yeah, that's about it. So that free space is huge. That's why once the market broke over that 18 level on the VIX, the market really got aggressive to the downside. And for the whole week, I mean, it stayed over the 18s. And that's probably why people weren't going long in the market because you don't have a volatility signal, you don't have volatility selling off to go long the market. So the cost to hedge is very expensive right now, I would say in terms of the last four months. I mean, premiums are very cheap because the VIX was at, you know, 13s to 15s, basically for a while, very long time, all the way back in December 23, all the way till now. So premiums are a little bit more expensive, puts got a little bit more expensive because the demand goes higher. So that's for the VIX, key close needs to be under 18. 
Otherwise, there's still a risk of it hanging over the 18s and marching higher. So that key close under the 18s is going to be huge. We really need to get under that for the SPY to rip, maybe even for the QQQ to come back up a little bit more aggressively. Really want that close under 18. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, we're looking at PFE calls a little bit further out, probably June or July expiration. IWM, 521 calls minimum, or the 517, whatever they are, the the May monthlies and then SPY also May monthlies minimum as well on that. But all calls this week, hopefully we can see a dead cap bounce in the market. Like I said, VIX needs to get back under 18. QQQ is a key level to reclaim at the 416s. SPY is at a direct demand zone right now. So hopefully that can hold up and we can see a little dead cat up to 503 on SPY. So love you guys. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff, and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with a trading mentor today completely free of charge.